Today's topic is something that I think a lot of us strive for in our daily wardrobe, and that's just simply how to make your outfit look more expensive, or maybe the word more elevated might be a better one. Especially this year where elevated basics, 90s redux, quiet luxury, they're gonna be a huge focus for the year. It's about making the most of what you already own, ensuring that your wardrobe appears more luxurious than the price tag may suggest. And in this video, I've compiled 12 super simple editor approved styling tips. You guys know that I love the research. This is gonna help you with your morning routine. And I've taken a look at Harper's Bazaar, Elle, Birdie, Vogue, Who, What, Wear, seen what they're all kind of saying when it comes to making your outfit look more expensive. And honestly, this is some tips as well, some advice from my years of experience of dressing yours truly. Often we think that expensive looking outfits require a hefty budget, but that's not always the case. Honestly, it's, it's not the case. Achieving a chic, sophisticated, and polished look is way easier than you may think. If you're new here, hey, my name's Amanda. I love to talk about style, life, style and travel when I can. And if you've joined me again for another video, I'm so happy to have you here in this cozy little nook of the internet. Let's begin, shall we? Tip number one is also a huge trend for this year, so this makes me very excited, and that is building the bones of your wardrobe. Kicking off our journey with upscale wardrobe, let's talk about the foundation to any great look. Building those bones of your wardrobe with perfect basics, it just, it isn't about just filling your closet. It's about investing in quality staples that define your style and stand the test of time. The secret of a timeless wardrobe lies in selecting those investment pieces that you're truly gonna love for years. So think about classic boots, denim, beautiful handbags, anything leather I really think of here. These essentials are a great place to put your money because the cost per wear on them is gonna come down quickly. Speaking to a more wardrobe piece though, let's talk about the classic button down shirt, for example. Versatility unmatched. You can dress it up, you can dress it down, layer it, wear it oversized, relaxed for a chic look. It is also perfect for transitioning from work to evening. But when you have a contemporary accent, it's all about balancing them with timeless pieces. This is gonna elevate and make things look more expensive instantly. And when shopping for basics, don't forget about fabrics. Look at that label. Synthetics definitely are more affordable, but they lack that longevity and they're just gonna look worn so much faster. If you opt for a natural material like satin, silk, cotton, linen, that can just add a touch of luxury to your outfit without breaking the bank. And these fabrics inherently, they just look more expensive and elevated in any look. Natural fabrics are also way more breathable. So if you're someone who naturally gets hot and sweaty, this is really gonna help you not have any smell while wearing your clothing. Before diving into building basics in your wardrobe though, it is crucial to understand your personal style. It's not a one size fits all model, sadly. And what works for one person might not work for another. Maybe a silk blouse is is more your style than a button down. Knowing your style preference is definitely going to help you shop for basics better and help you build your go-to wardrobe. Number two is the power of accessories. They can just amplify your look, they can pull everything together, and this year gold is the reigning metallic. So if you're a gold girly, this year is your year, but choose whatever you like, honestly. And opinion driven, yes, but I think this also stands the test of time. Pearls are a go-to timeless classic, and that is why I chose this outfit today. I have some gold, I have some pearls, just to show you how this regular kind of boring long sleeve can be elevated in look just with accessories. I've always known where to shop for my gold jewelry, but I recently discovered a new pearl jewelry brand called Biwako, and they are a Japanese company. They are named after Lake Biwa, and that is the birthplace of freshwater pearl farming. Amazing ethical company. The quality of this necklace is incredible, and their pieces are just a little bit more unique with this red bead. I think it just adds a really special touch to this piece. It makes it traditional, but far from boring. It's feminine yet conventional, and just effortlessly makes this outfit look chic. Do not save your things for best. I like wearing my special pieces regularly. It takes down the cost per wear. And two, there are so many ways you can do this. If you have a full set of jewelry, you're not gonna wanna wear that for your every single day, but you can choose little pieces from that set to elevate your everyday outfits. And that could be going from work or going out for a special event to meeting up with friends. Side note, if you're considering gifts this year, gold and pearls, are an amazing gift. Birthday, Mother's Day, plan ahead. <laughs> I highly recommend Buaco. Their ethical approach, the quality of all of their goods is amazing. I'll link them down in the description. They sent over this necklace and I am so grateful. They also gave us a 15% off promotion code, which was so kind. And that's gonna be better than you can find anywhere else. When adding gold jewelry, think about other accessories as well, like your belt and your bag, the hardware on both of those things. Coordinating your accessories in the same color palette 
ensures that your look is just intentional. And you'll find that intentionality and a polished look are really synonymous with elevated looks and expensive looks. But don't feel too caged down by this. If you love to mix metals, that has been a huge thing in the past couple of years. And my Chloe Tess, for example, it has both gold and silver hardware. And I still think that it elevates any outfit that I pair it with. Sometimes I wanna elevate my look from my day wear to night wear as well and make it look a bit more expensive if I'm going on a date. And that can be as easy as changing a sneaker for a kitten heel, which is another trend this year. You'll see more of those or an oversized purse that's carrying absolutely everything that I own to a sleek clutch. Just transitioning those accessories can make huge impact on your outfit. And to make your clothes look more expensive, just start with those accessories. Kind of pick a piece that you know you wanna wear and build around that. Chosen bag, a chic hat, jewelry, sunglasses. Another great point, I never leave the house without sunglasses. In all of these Pinterest photos, I feel like they just look more expensive because the gal is wearing sunglasses. Moving on to a game changer in personal style, and this is something that I'm personally learning, and that is get it tailored. Even though I'm personally 5'7", and a lot of clothes are made for around my height, tailoring has made a significant difference in some of the pieces that are a little bit longer or I just need a pleat somewhere here and there. Take my favorite trousers from Shauna Joy, for example. They're super long and while I love them, they would be so much more wearable and a better length for me if I took them in and get tailored. And I, and I honestly think I would wear them so much more, which is truly the objective of things we have in our wardrobe. This is something I'm gonna rectify this year. Hold me to it. Tailoring is definitely an investment, but sometimes even for those high street pieces that we absolutely love and go back to again and again, a slight tweak can achieve perfection. And it's just about finding that fit that really elevates each piece beyond its original price tag. But I'm definitely selective with this because it is pricey. Bodies change as well. So this is something to consider. If there's a piece you love and your body has changed because life, why not get it tailored to where you're at right now? As I get older, I just wanna say goodbye to those ill-fitting garments. One of my goals is to try on everything in my wardrobe and make some serious cuts. Let me know if you wanna see that. Next on our list of style upgrades is simple yet effective, and that is to wear a belt. It's amazing how one element can transform an outfit and add a touch of sophistication no matter how casual it is. I'm not talking about sweatpants, obviously, but it adds intentionality to your look, that word again. In the quest for a style that exudes effortlessness yet appears polished, a sleek and timeless belt is your secret weapon. And it's about finding that balance between casual and carefully curated. Adding a belt to everyday jeans or cinching a dress or a blazer can elevate your outfit instantly. And despite sometimes their boring reputation, belts can work wonders. They're not just functional, they're fashionable. And the best part, people may actually think that you've invested a lot more in your outfit than you actually have. I also like to think, just like sunglasses, that belts are the gateway to luxury. If you're interested in kind of getting into that world, if you're looking to dip your toe into the luxury market, this is a great place to start because they are the lower cost point on the menu of things that they have to offer. Ideally, it should be made out of genuine leather and really good material. If it has that price point of luxury, it better. And oftentimes it does, but make sure you check. And the likelihood of achieving a low cost per wear with a belt is super high. This is a hill I would die on. I think that every great wardrobe includes a black and a brown belt. Such a good go-to, low cost per wear. And with the rise of quiet luxury, you don't even need to have brand names. You don't even need to spend that luxury amount. All you're looking for is a well-made belt, genuine materials, add that to your outfit. It's gonna elevate it and inherently just make it look more expensive and intentional. Now let's talk about a styling approach that's effortlessly elegant and that is dressing in tonal colors. Opting for chic neutrals, all black, all white, or neutral shades. That is just all about the color choice that's gonna elevate immediately. It's a strategic way of creating a cohesive and a luxurious look. One of the secrets is monochromatic outfits. It immediately elongates your body. When you dress in tonal colors, you create an intentional, well put together appearance. When selecting your basics like dress pants, pencil skirt, a sheath dress, focus on great quality fabrics, just like we said before. These pieces in neutral colors like black, gray, cream, navy, 
they are just timeless in effect and in your wardrobe. You just need to find out which one suits you best and which one you love to wear. Playing with textures is also an easy way to add dimension to your outfit when you're going with a monochromatic look. And this approach is effortless, chic, and yes, looks very expensive. Royals, as well as I would say the famous, often embrace monochromatic dressing, conveying wealth and power. And the absence of color breaks or logos, it just takes the eye to the full outfit without interruption. That creates the impression of strength and height. So whether you're in an all white ensemble or varying shades of a neutral color, dressing in a monochrome is a low effort and a super high impact strategy to make your outfit look more expensive instantly. This point is one I took away from the articles and I wholeheartedly agree, and that is the importance of investing in timeless outerwear. It is something that is gonna elevate your style through an entire season. A well-chosen coat isn't just about battling the cold, even though as a Canadian cutie, I am all about that, but it's about a key fashion statement. Think about the outerwear that transcends trends camel coats, navy pea coats, long black wool coat, sheepskin, belted trenches, and I've even started to see the rise of teddy coats again and again. It just depends how they are. The Max Mara one is what I'm thinking of specifically. Build them up in your collection and they are just gonna make sure that you look timeless and elegant and expensive every single time you leave the door. Because every single time that you leave the door, it's not about what you're wearing underneath that counts, it's actually about what you have over top. A well-tailored coat in a flattering shade can elevate the simplest outfits. And I've noticed the difference between my winter coat confidence when I put on, I just got a black wool coat versus just like throwing on my dog walking coat. I immediately feel more confident and just good about my outfit altogether. And do your best to not overlook the power of the blazer either adding a blazer to casual attire like a hoodie or denim or pairing an oversized blazer with a silk dress for date night. Oh, I just love that look so much. I've been searching for my perfect blazer for ages and I found this one from Odd Muse and I just absolutely adore it. It fits with my personal style, but for a long time, I just thought I'm just not a blazer girly. None of these look good on me, but the key is finding the one that works for you. There's cropped ones, oversized ones, fitted ones, belted ones, non-belted ones, Maybe you just haven't discovered everything there is to offer in this area yet. I loved learning this in the articles too. Layering is key. And to make your outfit look more expensive or off the runway, fashion enthusiasts are currently loving the trend of having a blazer under an overcoat. It's innovative, well thought out, and it screams high fashion. And hey, it's just another layer for those colder months, which is the best thing ever. These may not be the most flashy, but they're an understated elegance and that's exactly what we're looking for when looking stylish and sensible. Our next style tip is all about the silhouettes and that is accentuating shapes specifically that fit your body. And this is about playing with dimensions and structure of your clothing to create an outfit that's not just stylish, but appears more expensive. There's real power in just having a few pieces that play with scale and silhouette. Take the puff sleeved blouse, for example. Paired with maybe a sleek pair of fitted pants or trousers, you've instantly got a dynamic look that kind of looks like it leaped right off of the runway. I love a puffed sleeve dress as well for celebrations and dinner date nights out. They just feel a little bit more special. Balancing contrast is an important part of this tip. While you pair the big sleeves with a fitted pant, you can also flip that. I think the word play is important here because you might try in a puffy sleeve shirt and be like, oh my gosh, that Amanda girl has a lot lost the plot. This looks horrible on me, but it's about finding the structure that really works for your body and just kind of creates magic in your own eyes. Just play, try things on, figure out your yuck, figure out your yum when it comes to silhouettes. But my advice is honestly, truly, try it. Another trick is to take a size up inspired by French girl fashion, going for a slouchy oversized look with basics like a blazer or high-waisted trousers. It's about seeing those shoulders or a touch of architecture and elegance in your outfit. Even with the peplum coming back, that is another really fun way to add architecture to your look. And maybe you are someone who totally suits the peplum top. I'm really excited to see this come back, but like without the Duff Puff and all of the other things we were doing when it was originally here. Our eighth style strategy is about mastering high-low dressing, a favorite of fashion icons like Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales. This approach is about blending formal and informal garments, creating both a refined and a relaxed look. High-low dressing revolves around taking sophisticated pieces like a tailored blazer and pairing them with relaxed items, just like blue jeans. And the result is an ensemble that balances elegance with comfort, something that Kate Middleton definitely exemplifies perfectly. She's known for mixing her labels with accessories 
accessible fast fashion and then showcasing her more luxury pieces as well. But it's not just defined by price tag. Take this look, for example, this I found off of the Vogue article, and this is her wearing a Zara blazer paired with Renault Moret trousers, a Cartier watch, and a Chanel bag. That is definitely the mix between high street and luxury fashion, creating a sense of aspiration yet attainability in her wardrobe. The key to success when it comes to high-low dressing is mixing and matching. And in all honesty, I've seen people with a ton of money have all luxury items, but have zero style. Buying expensive pieces only and thinking that it pops out elegance and style and fashion sense is definitely a marketing hoax and one that you don't want to fall under. Investing in more neutral pieces, the beige, the black, the white, we've talked about that already, but they're staples that can be worn repeatedly and teamed with various tops and bottoms, allowing for a versatile, expensive looking wardrobe, and they never go out of style. I think the same can be said for prints that follow the seasons, like florals versus a super trendy geometric print, for example, or a ton of logos. This is why Miranda Priestly is so on the money when she said, Morals for spring, groundbreaking. Because it's so true, it's so timeless, and it's so elegant, and it looks so expensive. For me, this is one of my favorite ways to play with style and invest in really good pieces as I age, heirloom pieces, I look at them, but I'm not constricted to just looking at luxury, just looking at premium, or just looking at high street. Point number nine it might be one of the most important when it comes to elevating your style, and not something we wanna overlook, and that is taking care of your clothing and accessories. It's about those extra steps that you do to transform your outfit over time from ordinary to feeling brand new again. So let's start with steaming. We've all been guilty of skipping this step, okay? We have all done it. Raise your hand. But taking those extra few minutes to steam or press your clothes adds an instant polish, even to the most worn out pieces. A wrinkle-free outfit looks intentional and well cared for. Portable steamers are a great solution. I'll link one that I've had for a while down in the description box. I even take it with me when I travel sometimes. Within this point is also depiller and lint roller. It's really nice to kind of keep a lint roller in the car or even at the front door. Just as you're heading out, this can work wonders, especially for sweaters and knit dresses and t-shirts. I like to plan my schedule actually around when I'm gonna give my clothes a care day. And instead of do making this something that I have to do, I make this something that I get to do. So I pour my favorite drink, I put on a show or a podcast, and I just kind of have at it, and I iron things all at once, lowering the friction to do it and increasing the enjoyment to get it done. And whatever your framework is to get your clothes ready, this is another way of kind of avoiding that scruffy look when you're in a rush because anything hanging in your closet is good to go. I just got a new debobbler actually as well. It's kind of like a little shaver and I'll link that down below too because it has been so therapeutic to just watch a show and debobble a sweater and make it look brand new. Third in this category is reading care labels. Another simple yet crucial step. And this is one I need to learn again and again and again. And the guide on how to wash and dry your clothes can maximize their longevity and create minimal damage. Let me tell you, I'm not perfect on this. I shrunk a Cezanne's knit the other day and it is still making me so upset. I tried to stretch it out. I haven't tried it on yet. We'll see what happens. But ultimately proper care can make your wardrobe look more expensive, extend the life of your garments, which means you're going to spend less money on them, which means maybe you can save up for those luxury items you've been coveting for your collection. And speaking to that, when you're thinking of taking care of your wardrobe and taking care of your pieces, don't forget about your accessories and your handbags, wiping them off, keeping them in their garment bag, um, cleaning off the hardware. These are all things that are gonna help you extend their life too. I would love to know if you have any tips on this because I really wanna learn more about it and dive into it a bit more specifically in a future video. In one article, they suggested glass cleaner on patent leather or even unscented body lotion or other types. So yes, let me know what you are currently doing that is tried, tested, and true. Now we haven't really touched on this yet, but a specific aspect of your wardrobe that can dramatically elevate your style is buying the proper shoes. Shoes are not just a fashion statement. They are also something that impacts our life and our body as we carry ourselves through the day. Good shoes are immediately noticeable and can definitely pull an outfit together. And this is where I found that personally the most difficult part about creating outfits. When I kind of play within my wardrobe and look at my outfit in the mirror, it's really important that I also incorporate the shoe I'm thinking of. It's about investing in sturdy, well 
well-made footwear, keeping your feet comfortable and stylish. You don't need to buy the luxury ready to wear. Instead, you can invest in a good sneaker, loafer, a good leather shoe, a good leather boot. An expensive looking shoe paired with a more budget friendly outfit can offer an instant elevation in style. The biggest shift for me has been focusing on quality over quantity. Definitely having less shoes has been helpful. One for me taking care of them, but two for me considering what to wear on each occasion that truly makes sense versus that like five inch heel that you're never gonna wear. But conversely, the wrong shoe choice can definitely detract from your entire look. But anytime you take in a tip from YouTube or anyone, any style expert, you can take it with a grain of salt because it's really just about you and your personal style. We only have two points left and this one I did not find in any articles and I think it is such a good one. One for elevating your outfits, but two for just feeling good. And that is adding fragrance. By incorporating fragrance into your style, it's a subtle yet powerful way to elevate your overall fashion and create a more sophisticated appearance. A carefully chosen scent can not only complement your outfit, but also add that air of luxury and refinement. I will link down a couple of my absolute faves down below. I do not feel complete. I don't feel like my outfit is complete unless I have a scent on. And sometimes I will even choose the scent for what I'm doing. So if I want it to be elevated, I choose this scent. If I'm looking to be more relaxed, I'll choose that scent. The right perfume or cologne can significantly improve your elegance and just the perceived value of your overall overall ensemble. And now we come to what I personally think is the most important aspect of elevating your style, making it look more expensive, and that is taking care of yourself and carrying yourself with confidence. It is amazing how much our self-care routine, like just having our nails done. I got mine done yesterday, neutral, short, very January in theme here. It's called Fresh Linen, and I just love them. I feel so refined, I feel so put together. But just having a natural nail, nice and clean, short, or just filed down, hair done, your makeup, up the way that you like it. It can just boost overall confidence and that definitely always complements our fashion choices. If I'm wearing something super simple, like a beautiful white t-shirt, just nice and crisp, a little flap up on the sleeve, a great pair of jeans and a great pair of shoes and I have all of those other things done, as the foundation, it's always gonna make it look more elevated than just a white t-shirt and jeans. Feeling good about ourselves inherently will just help the way that we present our outfits. Grooming and confidence aren't just accessories, they're essential ingredients that radiate from the inside out. And many of our outfits will just look more polished and more expensive. It's about piecing together looks and things that you love and things that are uniquely you. But the thing we have to understand is the common denominator here is you. So we gotta take care of that first. So whatever you're wearing, just rock it because confidence is the best accessory and it will never go to style and it will always elevate your look no matter how cheesy it sounds. Thank you guys so much for being here. It would mean so much to me if you liked this video, if you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe, become part of this cozy little nook of the internet. It has been growing and I love chatting with you guys in the comments and just seeing who you are and hanging out with you. And the fact that I get to just kind of like hang out with you in your house, your bedroom, or when you're doing chores. It's so cool. <laughs> it is so, so cool. I love you guys so, so, so much. Let me know what you want to see in a future video, what you liked from this video. Just love having conversations with you and just hearing what you want to hear more about, what you're like, I want to hear Amanda tell me about that. That means the world to me. So without further ado, I'll, I'll keep coming up with ideas, but we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.